For those of you who watched our video on Don Bosco's Dream of Hell and said, this is just a dream, it doesn't mean anything, I would like to present to you the following story that provides irrefutable proof that St. John Bosco's dreams were visions sent from God to convey a truth in reality, whether it be about hell or the sin of impurity, or as in today's dream, to prophesy someone's death. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. On February 1st, Don Bosco announced that a young student might die before the month's exercise for a happy death. If he lived long enough to finish the special prayers, that time would be the maximum amount of time God would allow him to live. A dream prompted this announcement. As Don Bosco slept, he seemed to be entering the courtyard and found himself amid his young boys at recess. By his side, he had the usual guide who accompanied him in previous dreams. Suddenly, a majestic eagle appeared, circling lower and lower above the boys. Don Bosco marveled at the bird, and the guide said, Do you see that eagle? He wants to seize one of your boys. Which one? asked Don Bosco. The one on whose head the eagle is going to land. Don Bosco stared at the bird. After a few more turns, the eagle alighted on 13-year-old Antonio Ferraris from Castellazzo Bormida. Don Bosco recognized the boy and woke up. Then, as soon as he awoke, he clapped his hands to see if he was awake and started to pray, Lord, if this isn't a dream but true, when will it occur? He fell asleep again, and the guide reappeared, saying, Ferraris will not do the exercise for a happy death more than once. Thus, Don Bosco realized that it was real. He had to tell Ferraris without saying his name to him or the others. At that time, he was healthy. A month later, Don Bosco repeated the prediction to his boys. At the time, a 13-year-old boy named Giabantista Savio, a native of Cambiano, had been with his parents on March 1st. He was suffering from a severe illness and the rumor had spread that he was the one whose end was predicted by Don Bosco. When speaking to the boys that evening of March 3rd, he said, Tonight, I want to talk to you about your life at the oratory. First, Lent has already begun, and we must sanctify it with good works. Those who are obliged to fast already know what they must do without my telling them. But what about the others? They, too, must do good works and since they cannot fast due to their ages, let them do something else. I suggest confession and frequent Holy Communion to obtain all the graces you need from God. Of all the times in the year, Lent is the most advantageous to ask for help. I've already announced that one of us will die. You might ask me, is Savio the one? I won't tell you. Who is he then? The Lord knows. He's among you, and he has heard my warning. I hope he did well in his last exercise for a happy death. Be prepared, therefore, all of you. Our divine Redeemer said 19 centuries ago, death will come like a thief in the night when we least expect it. I repeat these warnings to you now because I've noticed for some time that disturbances have entered the house that must stop. Lies are often told with ease. There are too many pretexts for leaving the church during sacred services. Going through the house, I always find boys loitering, filled with excuses to silence those supervising them. Even during study time, boys are absent with the pretext of going to confession. I am pleased with the greater part of you who are doing well. However, a few commit faults. In the refectory, soup and bread are splattered on the floor over your companions, and sometimes jokingly over those in charge of you. Therefore, don't commit such faults anymore. Try to do better in the future. I recommend that you go to confession and communion frequently. But it's better not to confess than to make bad confessions. It will be one less confession, but also one less sacrilege. But you might ask me, but shall we no longer confess? I say it's better to stay as you are 
rather than add a sacrilege to your already heavy conscience. What shall we do, then? Remedy all confessions poorly made, and remedy them promptly, because if by sin your souls will be redder than scarlet, by penance they will become whiter than snow. Make your thanksgiving properly after Holy Communion. Some have the nerve to approach Holy Communion and think nothing of correcting their faults. They're not afraid to waste long hours talking about banalities and fleeing from their studies. Yet others receive Holy Communion in the morning, and during the day they engage in indecent conversations with their companions. Some murmur about this and that and complain about their superiors and fellow students. How can it be said that these people have made truly good communions? Strive to show that you know how to draw fruit from the sacraments. I know we can't become perfect in a moment. We overcome our defects only gradually and with much difficulty. However, at least try to eradicate them. Please show me that some improvement is taking place in your soul. Give proof of your good will by fulfilling your duties and being diligent. The next day, someone asked Don Bosco privately about the one who would die next. Don Bosco replied, The surname of the one who is to leave for eternity begins with the letter F. About thirty pupils bore surnames with this initial, and all were in good health. Now at that time, a teacher named John Bezio entered Don Bosco's room and said, I regret that the Lord always takes the best young men from me. Tell me, is it one of my boys that will die? Yes, it's the boy whose name is Antonio Ferraris. He's very virtuous and he's prepared. Bizio asked him how he knew, and Don Bosco told him about his dream. He said, Keep an eye on him and alert me so that I may go and assist him in the last days of his illness. In the meantime, Antonio Ferraris began to experience an illness that occasionally forced him to go to the infirmary. At first, it seemed a minor ailment but soon it worsened. Don Bosco went to the boy's bed with Dr. Gribaldo, who saw that the sick boy's life was in danger. The boy's mother came to the oratory while her son's state was not yet critical. After caring for him for a few days, she, who considered Don Bosco a saint, said to Bizio, Has Don Bosco said whether my son will live or die? Why do you ask me this question? Bizio answered to know whether I should stay or return home. But what about the disposition of his soul? Bizio asked. I am a mother, and of course I wish for my son to get well. For the rest, let the Lord do what he thinks is best for him. And are you resigned to God's will? asked Bizio. Yes, whatever the Lord wills, the mother responded. But what if your son dies? Let God's will be done. Seeing her generous disposition, Bizio hesitated a little and said, Then stay. Don Bosco assured me that your son is a good young man and is well prepared. The Christian mother listened, shed a few tears, and said, If so, I will stay. Bizio had told her to stay because, according to Don Bosco's prophecy, her son had no more than five or six days left to live. Antonio Ferraris died on the morning of March 16th, receiving all the comforts of religion. When he entered his last agony, Don Bosco approached his bed, suggested some ejaculations, and gave him final absolution. The boy then commended his soul to God. His death occurred before completing the second exercise for a happy death, as the dream had predicted. On the evening of March 16th, Don Bosco thus spoke to his boys, I see you're anxious to hear from me about the last moments of our Ferraris. I'm here to answer you. He died with resignation. During his short illness, he suffered much, but with great serenity. I asked him if he wanted anything from me, and he said, Only one thing, help me get to heaven. I ask all those watching this video to pray to St. Joseph that we too may have such a resigned and holy death and if you'd like to be enrolled in our Saturday Mass Intentions for the promoters of St. John Bosco, please click on the link I've put on the screen. I'd like to thank you all once again for subscribing and watching our videos. 
God bless you and Our Lady keep you.